Boy, that's satisfying when you get it in one long piece. Hey folks, it is a beautiful winter solstice day today here in Ohio. It's almost 50 degrees and the bees are out and about. And though it's a little cloudy right now, the sunrise was absolutely stunning this morning. Now I've been processing beeswax for the last couple weeks. If you've been following along with my adventures, you know that I harvested over 300 pounds of honey this year. And so that resulted in a lot of wax and I wanted to get that rendered out so that I could make some lip balm, some salves, soaps, and, and quite a few other things. I usually let the bees clean up the wax cappings and I normally do that earlier in the season, but it was really hot and dry this year and we had a dearth. And so I wanted to wait and I just put it out last week the week before and let the bees do most of the cleanup I always set up the cleaning station far away from the hives just to prevent any kind of a robbing situation we have wild hives all around us And so I didn't want to instigate that. And so I saved it and it's been a really mild December. And so it worked out perfectly. They cleaned up the wax cappings for the most part last week. And I was able to process the wax and get it rendered. And though I've processed most of the wax already, I have a little bit of honey left in the tubs. We'll go over and take a look at that here in just a minute. So you can see there's not a lot left in this tote. These totes were full. So it's just absolutely mesmerizing to watch. Now I'm getting ready to make some lip balm, hand salve, and several other things. And so I had to get all of this wax ready to use. And I just wanted to show you how I rendered the wax. And that just means to separate it from any remaining honey, as well as plant debris, whatever else may be in there. And you can see process it into clean, pure wax here. I have a variety of equipment for processing wax. These are different wax melting double boiler pots. I keep one separated for dirty wax, but I try to keep the others relatively clean. Beeswax leaves a residue, and so I have dedicated vessels just for wax. Now I use this commercial grease filter and stand for filtering the impurities out of wax. I also use these for filtering maple sap and syrup, which is coming up very soon. I use a large pot to boil water to serve as a double boiler for melting the wax. It's also helpful to keep the wax pourable in between filtering and transferring wax to the silicone molds. I like using silicone because it's non-stick, the beeswax comes out so easily. These are convenient two ounce portions and they also have such cute designs. I'll use these for soap as well. I'm going to run through the three methods that I typically use for rendering the wax. Rendering is necessary to remove any remaining honey, the pollen, pupil casings, plant material, whatever else might be in the wax so that it can be used for a variety of purposes. Just a word of warning though, wax is hard to clean off some surfaces so it's best to be careful and clean up quickly if you're working in the kitchen like I do. This first method of rendering is not something I do often. Sometimes, especially when the wax is fresh and the bees get to clean the cappings exceptionally well, I can just melt it directly over very low heat. Beeswax melts around 144 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 62, 66 Celsius. So that's why we typically use the double boiler. Now I remove it from the heat and filter it as soon as it melts. But let's discuss the filtering a little later. I wanna get through the next method first. Now normally I use water to help me remove the honey as well as the other debris. I usually use a pan and boiling water on the stove to help separate the impurities from the wax when I have just a small amount of wax to process. I add about an inch of water and the wax to the pan and bring it to a simmer, just a low boil. Now you can't walk away during this time. We don't want the wax to burn and the wax would make a terrible mess if it boiled over. So I make sure the wax melts completely and then I allow it to cool. And what this does, it causes the wax to float on top of the water and then there's a layer of those impurities that get trapped in between. After the wax has cooled to the touch, I get to scrape off this layer of scum with a knife. It's important to keep all this material and any wax from the drains because it's definitely not good for plumbing. 
it's nearly impossible to remove all of this debris. And so I repeat the process again. I melt it with water, I let it cool and remove the scum again. And the same goes for the water. I always dump the dirty water in my fire pit just in case there are any little bits of wax or things that would not dissolve in the plumbing system. And then I let the discs of wax sit for a while to let any moisture evaporate before moving on. Occasionally, I will repeat this a third time if the wax is particularly dirty, especially if it's brood comb. Now the last method I often turn to when I have a larger batch of wax, like this year, it's using a slow cooker in much the same way as the last method. Now this process is much lower maintenance since it doesn't have to be monitored so closely and I can be working on other tasks while the wax melts. And as before, I run it through at least two cycles of melting, cooling, removing the scum, and keeping everything out of the drain. It's rather meditative in a way. I enjoy it. It's actually kind of satisfying. This is why the dirty water ends up in the fire pit. The one drawback to this method is that it can result in a very large disc of wax when the process is finished, and so I usually have to break it up into smaller pieces in order to melt it. And just as before, I gently melt it over a very low heat and then filter it. Regardless of the rendering method I use, the filtering process is the same. Again, I use very low heat to melt the wax without water. It's important to keep the heat really low and to stay close to prevent burning or any accidents. Now I have two large wax melting double boiler pots. And as I stated earlier, I use one for dirty wax from the first filtering. Then I use the other clean one for any subsequent filtering. Normally I only filter twice, but I have had to triple filter on occasion. And another important thing I learned from experience is to always wipe the bottom of the vessel before moving on to the next step. This prevents any water drops from landing in the wax. I use this commercial grease filter and stand for filtering any remaining impurities out of the wax. It's really handy. I submerge the wax melting pot that I'm pouring into in a pot of hot water. This is so the wax doesn't cool down before the next step. This was a problem in the past when it got too cool to work with. Now I simply fold over the edges of the filter to secure it to the stand and slowly pour the wax. Most of the debris is removed with the first pass, but sometimes there are little bits that make it through. Then I switch to a clean filter and a clean pot and I repeat, keeping the melting pot in hot water while I get the molds ready. And as always, I take great care to prevent any spills and clean them up quickly if it does happen. And I usually try to wipe down any surfaces while the wax is still hot. When the wax is finally clean enough, it's time to pour it into the molds. And again, I always keep the container in hot water just to make sure that it's all pourable when I'm ready. Before I start pouring the hot wax, I take a minute to make sure the molds are all level and in place. I make slow movements so as not to make a mess, but I work swiftly so the wax doesn't cool down too much and begin to solidify. And I simply fill each well just to the brim. It's very helpful to have a steady hand during this process. I make sure that the wax is completely cooled before removing them from the molds, and that usually takes about an hour or so. Then I just transfer the wax to a tote that's lined with paper towels. This helps to prevent any jostling around during movement that would mar up the wax. 
and then I use the wax to make many different products. I'm working on lip balm and salve right now, so I'll link that video as soon as it's done. I hope you enjoyed this video and looking behind the scenes to see how wax was rendered and cleaned up for various projects. And stick around, I'll also be sharing some videos of those projects here pretty soon. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for stopping by.